Anyway, with Kose having a 10th life crisis and Mina at work, I have some free time. Who should I hang out with? I did tell Erlen that I'd help her with her homework. Now that I have some free time, I should take care of that. I make my way back to Erlen's room and knock on the door. Come in. I open the door and see Erlen seated on the bed. Hey, are you free? I can help you with your homework now. Finally. I thought you'd forgotten. I tried. I take a look around. Where are your books? Erlen goes over to her desk and pulls the workbooks out of a drawer. She sets them all on top of the desk in a big pile. Which of these do you want to start with? You're the expert. You choose. Hmm. I go through the different subjects, trying to remember their due dates. Okay, the only assignment due on Monday is math. Let's do that one first. I grab my math book so we can work on it together. Erlen seems chipper as she gets situated at her desk. What are we covering now? Mobius transformations? Diophantine equations? Transcendental number theory? We're only first year, so you're taking algebra. Oh, so we'll probably be covering Hilbert's Nullstellensatz or Datakind domains then? What kind of crazy algebra do they teach in her world? This is more like intermediate algebra. Here, let me walk you through some of the problems. I open the workbook to the first page and hold it out for her to see. She looks completely bewildered. Okay, so I know it looks complicated, but if you go through it step by step, it's not so bad. I don't understand this at all. The idea is to figure out what x is, so you start by... No, I understand that. x is negative 9, obviously. Huh? Is it? Erlen continues talking while I quickly solve the problem. The equation simplifies to negative 20 minus 9x equals 16 minus 5x. From there, you can see that negative 4x equals 36, which makes x equal negative 9. I finish the problem not long after Erlen finishes her explanation. She's correct. Despite how easily the answer came to her, she still looks confused. I thought you said you didn't understand this at all. I don't. What is the point of this exercise? What is the problem we are meant to solve? That was the problem. The point was to figure out what X is. Erlen's eyes widen in realization. This is what people our age are meant to be learning in Japan? This is elementary material. Erlen takes the workbook out of my hands, regarding it with pity and fascination. No wonder your society is so underdeveloped compared to Velden. Eh. But the superiority of Velden seems to be important to Erlen. I doubt anything I say would change your mind. If the homework is so simple, why'd you ask for my help in the first place? Obviously, I didn't know just how simple the assignment was. How? Didn't you look in the book? Erlen tilts her head and stares blankly. I sign, press my palm to my forehead. You didn't even open the book, did you? Of course not. Why would I? Did you not have homework in Velden? I did, but it wasn't so standard. What does that mean? My tutors individualized my lessons and assignments. I didn't have a workbook like this. So they'd give you handouts or something after each lesson? Essentially, yes. Although it was all digital. I do miss that about Velden. You all still seem to rely on more antiquated methods, and it takes a bit of adjustment. You know, you mentioned Velden a lot, but you haven't told me any real details. What's it like? Erlen's eyes light up. She gets a happy, nostalgic smile on her face. It's a beautiful country. We've made efforts to preserve nature, and our countryside is full of rolling green hills as far as the eye can see. Our towns and cities are bustling with businesses. Velden's economy has grown stronger each year and it's due to the strong relationships and trade agreements with our neighboring countries. And of course, Velden is the leader in the advancement of new technology. Our university programs attract people from all nations. She sighs. I miss being home surrounded by my comforts and the palace gardens. I used to sit by the dancing fountains whenever I wanted to clear my mind. Being royalty of anywhere must make it great. That all sounds great, but I'm pretty sure your experience would be very different from the average person's. She frowns. Why is that? Because you're royalty. Obviously that gives you certain comforts. That may be true. But what I've stated is true for everyone in Velden. I know not everyone is involved in the day-to-day -day of foreign trade, but they still benefit because a wide selection of goods are available to them. It's the same with access to quality education. Maybe they will never see the palace gardens. But there are public parks which are equally beautiful. I suppose that's fair. She suddenly falls quiet. All this talk about Velden must have made her homesick. 
based on what I'm hearing, Erlen must be having a harder time adjusting to life here than she lets on. Don't worry, you'll be able to see all that again soon. Yes, I know. She quickly clears her throat and turns back to her homework. Well, thank you for your help. But I don't believe further assistance will be necessary. I know how to answer the rest of these. I take a quick look at her workbook. Much to my surprise, she's already done half the assignment. When did you finish all those? Just now, of course. When we were talking? Yes. Wow, she was filming this out without even really paying attention, and showing all her work. My work here is done. It's clear she doesn't need my help at all. Well, looks like you got a handle on things, so I'll leave you to it. Erlen nods, idly waving me away. She looks very confident now, focused on her work. I leave the room, shutting the door behind me. It was interesting to hear a little more about Velden. wonder if it really is how she described. I keep replaying the conversation in my head as I return to my room and finish up with the rest of my homework. What would an alternate world really be like? Eventually, it becomes late and I feel myself growing tired. By the time I go to bed, I've come up with all kinds of crazy ideas. Who knows how many different worlds are out there? Considering the situation, it's no wonder Erlen can act a little strangely sometimes. I go to sleep feeling like I understand her a little better. I wake up bright and early the next day, stretching my arms high over my head. I slept so well last night, I feel so refreshed. After I throw on my school uniform, I go downstairs for breakfast. I pause at the table to see Erlen is already waiting, but Mina isn't. Huh? What are you doing down here? Don't we have school today? Yeah? Then why wouldn't I be waiting? I suppose she has a point, but I'm still surprised that she's taken on to the school persona so easily. She munches on some toast as I slide into the chair next to her. Erlen seems oddly relaxed about everything. Is she really okay? If I were in her shoes, I don't know if I could go about my day without a care in the world. Especially if I was literally in another world. Hey, Erlen, how are you so calm about all this? All of what? About going to school and being stuck in this world. Aren't you worried about getting home? Of course not. What? I have nothing to fear because I know I'll be home soon. How? Because as a princess, my family will do everything in their power to find me. It won't be too long before they figure out where I went. Erlen pauses, then looks at me. Oh, and I suppose there's you, too. Me? She nods. Yes, you're helping me figure out if there's a way back from this side. So I might as well enjoy my time here, as I'll be back home soon enough. That's the spirit? That's a very rational way to think about it. I'm glad Erlen's making the best of her situation. Not everyone would be so level-headed, but she seems to be taking everything in stride. That's a smart way to look at it. With your family's resources, I'm sure you'll be home in no time. Until then, it's a good idea to live in the moment. She nods. Mina finally arrives downstairs, shifting her bag over her shoulder. Good morning! Morning. Are you guys ready to go? Erlen and I nod. We grab our lunch boxes, some fresh bread on the way out. The delicious taste of strawberry jam melts over my tongue as I push open the door. It's another beautiful day. A nice breeze filters through the trees and rustles the branches over our heads as we walk. Eventually, Kosei meets us on the way there. He grins and waves as he comes up from around the corner. When we arrive at school, the place is buzzing with students. A few are scattered about, finishing up some last-minute homework, but most are talking animatedly to their friends. What is everyone so excited about? No idea. We enter our classroom and I plop down in my seat with a sigh. Miss Sato is in the front of the room, scribbling something on the board. It looks like the club fair is happening today. That's what all the commotion is. Mina perks up. Oh yeah, that's right! Erlen looks confused. What is a club fair? It's an event where the school showcases all of the clubs it offers. They have all different kinds to choose from, and it's super fun checking all of them out. Why do you bother checking out the other clubs when we all know you're just gonna choose swim club anyway? There's nothing wrong with seeing what else is out there! Mina leans forward on her desk and smiles. Do you like swimming, Erlen? Erlen hesitates. She doesn't seem thrilled by the idea. Give it a shot. What's the worst that could happen? You should try it and see if you like it. She doesn't look convinced. Maybe I'll observe it first before deciding. Mina nods. Good idea. 
Miss Sato wipes her hands after she's finished writing on the board. Good morning, class. Just a quick announcement. The club fair will be happening today. It's a mandatory event, so make sure you all attend. Because of that, let's get started with the lesson. Please open your textbooks. We'll continue our lecture from yesterday. There's the sound of ruffling pages. I crack open my notebook to take notes and she begins the lesson. The rest of the school day is uneventful, but it goes by at a decent pace. Having Mina, Kosei, and Erlen around makes the time go by faster. Eventually the bell rings and we're dismissed for the club fair. Everyone shoots to a stand and collects their belongings. Okay, everyone, come with me! We follow Miss Sato out of the door. The club fair is set up in the quad with different booths lined up in rows. It's already pretty crowded. Mina's eyes light up. Oh, wow! It looks like they have a wider selection this year. I glance at Erlen, who boredly surveys our surroundings. Do you want to look around? Is there a point? I'm not going to be here long anyway. Yeah, but didn't you say you wanted to make the most of your time here? Yes. Since you have to be at school anyway, you should just look around and see what catches your interest. She doesn't look convinced. Hey, you'll never know if you don't give things a chance. Who knows what new hobbies or interests you'll discover? Think of the possibilities! Erlen heaves a deep sigh. <sighs> if it means you'll stop pestering me about it, then I suppose I'll have a look around. Kosei overhears and chimes in. I'm gonna look around too. Same here. How about we meet back here when we're done? Sounds good to me. Once we're all agreed, we branch off in different directions. I'm about to set off when I spot Kira's long dark hair in the crowd. She happens to glance my way and we make eye contact. Carefully, she makes her way over to me. Hey, are you enjoying the club fair so far? It seems interesting. Do you have an idea which club you want to join? She pauses thinking. I'm not sure. There are a lot to choose from. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look yet. Kira nods. I have, but there are more I still want to see. I hadn't expected Kira to be so interested in the fair. Although it makes sense to check out a lot of booths when you're still undecided. Oh, the line for the art club is short now. Okay. She quickly says goodbye before heading for the booth. Wonder what other booths Kira has checked out. Well, time for me to start looking around. But that will be in a later build, apparently. Those clubs sound really cool. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun this year. Just as I'm returning from the booth, I see Kosei and Mina already waiting for us. Hey, see anything you liked? Yeah, there were so many! Did you know they have a Taekwondo club this year? Yeah, I saw that! They have a cooking one, too! Just think of all the delicious ramen they make in that club! Ooh, I bet that would be a good one to join. I saw they added a cosplay club, too. Kosei lifts an eyebrow. Cosplay? Yep, that's probably the one you're going to join, right? He crosses his arms. Do I look like Erlen to you? Why would I join the cosplay club? Because you already look like an anime character with that grabby divine hairstyle. Hey, it takes some serious skill to look this good. Mina giggles. <laughs> okay, then. What's up with you commenting on my hair all the time? He flicks his bangs out of his face with a smirk. You must be really into it, or you wouldn't focus so much on it. Mina makes a face. These two never stop, do they? I cough and the two of them look up. Were any of these clubs able to convince you to join them? Mina smiles. No, I'm sticking with swimming. Yeah, and I'm not swaying from soccer. What about you? <laughs> so, I'll try to look into what clubs are offered and we can do a poll for when this is actually released. I imagine it's actually going to be a lengthy commitment throughout the rest of the game, which is why I can't just do like save, pick, rewind, so on. Well, I hope you have a lot of fun this year, cuz... Thanks. I see Erlen approaching us from the crowd. A determined look is carved across her face. I have decided. We blink. Uh... That's pretty abrupt. On what, a uh, club? Yes. I have finally found a place that understands my birthright. What are you talking about? Student Council. You're looking at your new grade representative. 
You're for democracy. I'm for the freedom of the people, if that's what you mean. You are. Yes, freedom for them to finally see what they're missing and to hand over their votes for my reign. Uh... Me and this face lights up. I had no idea you were interested in student government. You should definitely run if that's what you're passionate about. Go say nods. Yeah, you'd have my vote. Erlen lifts her chin with a smirk. Huh, you see? Even this complete stranger would vote for me. You mean Kose? She blinks. What's a Kose? Kose sputters. What? Are you kidding? We've been through this! We have? Yeah, don't you remember? Silence. We just spent the whole school day together. More silence. We literally all came to the club fair together as a group! Oh. She smiles and then walks away, leaving him in the dust. Seriously? He clutches his chest and flops onto the floor. Why doesn't she realize I exist? Mina stifles her giggle while I shake my head. I suppose you can get your revenge by not voting for her. Kosei sighs. Oh, it's okay. I'd still vote for her. The bell rings signaling it's time to go back to our classes. Talk about timing. We follow the group of students back into the hall. Erlen seems excited now that she has decided on something she likes. As we take our seats in class, everyone is still talking about what clubs they're joining this year. Miss Sato enters the room and claps her hands to get our attention. All right, settle down, class. I know you're excited, but we have some things to go over. Everyone quiets down and Miss Sato begins her lesson. The second half of classes go by quickly. And apparently we slept through class. Soon the bell rings, signaling the end of the school day. Chairs scrape against the floor as everyone stands to gather their things. After retrieving my bag, I look around the classroom for Kira, but she's not there. I hope she didn't forget about her revisit of the shrine today. I didn't have a chance to ask her about it while we were in class. She's probably waiting for me out front. After saying goodbye to my friends, I hurry out of the classroom and into the courtyard. Kira waits for me in front of the doors. Her back is slung carelessly over her shoulder. As she waits, she frees her hair from the strap line and falls down her back. She glances at me as I approach. Hey. Hi. You ready to go? She nods. We head out of the courtyard and pass through the school gates. Soon we're on the path towards the shrine. Thanks for coming with me. Kira nods again. I just hope that Mrs. Tanaka is there. Same. I soon recognize the shrine gates in the distance. The closer we get, the more my stomach twists into knots. I really hope we get some answers this time. As if sensing my thoughts, Kira picks up the pace. When we arrive, the shrine is quiet. A few people wander the grounds, enjoying the tranquility. We head towards the offering box. Seems a likely place for volunteers or staff members to frequent. Kira grasps something within her hand and momentarily holds it against her chest. What's that? She opens her palm to reveal an amulet. It's for luck. Yeah. I doubt an amulet will do anything to affect our luck. Kira closes her hand. It couldn't hurt. I guess, but that's because none of this stuff is real anyway. A luck amulet doesn't actually bring luck, just how a love amulet isn't going to get you a date. But it may bring hope. So? That affects confidence. More confidence brings more positivity. Okay. More positivity means someone will focus harder on what they want, which can lead to better results. I'm not sold. That feels like a stretch. Just wishing for something doesn't make it come true, regardless of how confident you are. Maybe. We continue on our way. As we approach the offering box, someone exits, nearly running into us. Whoa, whoa. sorry. I glance up and see a guy who looks to be about our age. It's okay. We're about to pass him when he stops us. Oh, uh, wait a minute. You're friends with Kosei Nakahara, right? We freeze. How does he know that? I take another look at him. Although he wears the same school uniform, I don't recognize him. Must be an upperclassman. I glance at Kira, but she doesn't recognize him either. Yeah? His grin broadens. Oh, good. I thought so. Can you pass on a message for me? Uh, who are you? Uh, sorry. I should have introduced myself. 
I'm Daisuke Miyamoto, and I'm on the soccer club. I see. So that's how he knows Kosei. He must have recognized me from when I helped Kosei practice. We forgot to give these invites to everyone at tryouts. He passed me an envelope. Look, if you wouldn't mind getting this to Kosei, I'd really appreciate it. I've got a ton of people to hand these out to, and you'd be doing me a huge favor. Holy crap, he's asking us to cut Kosei? Sure, that's fine. He breathes a sigh of relief. Oh, great, thank you. That helps me a lot. I've got more people to track down, so I won't disturb you any longer. He waves as he walks away. Thanks again! No problem. With a final smile, he jogs off. Kira looks after him expressionless. It must be tough trying to track down everyone from tryouts. Yeah, he's lucky he ran into us. She nods. Anyway, should we go up to the box? Yes, let's go. Together we step up towards the offering box. The main hall is right nearby. From here I have a pretty clear view inside. I peek in, but there are too many people to spot anyone clearly. A moment later, Kira grasps my arm. Hmm. I jump in surprise, wrenching free from her grip. She gives me a confused look, and I feel the heat creep up my neck and into my face. That was a big reaction for a small gesture. Sorry, you startled me. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. What's going on? Over there. Is that the woman? She points to an elderly woman sweeping the leaves off of the main path. Her gray hair is pulled into a low bun and her clothes look neatly pressed, but she doesn't look familiar. She's not the old woman I talked to. Maybe she's Miss Ta Tanaka. We could ask her. Yeah, it couldn't hurt to talk to her. She might know something. Kira nods. I lead us over to the woman who blinks as we approach. Sorry to disturb you, are you Mrs. Tanaka? Her eyes widen. Oh, yes. Have we met before? No, but we were told that you could help us. She splits into a knowing grin. Of course, a beautiful couple like you two. I bet you've come to pray for a long and happy relationship. That's a random assumption. How did she come to that conclusion? We've done nothing couply at all. What? No, not even close. We're not together. The woman chuckles and shakes her head. No need to be shy. I was young once too, you know. In fact, you remind me a bit of myself when I was a youngster. You were male? Oh, she's talking to Kira. She winks at Kira who blinks in surprise. Mrs. Tanaka sighs dreamily. Oh. To be young again. She snaps back to reality and nods briskly. Yes, well, you've come at a good time. The energies today are very strong. The energy? Yes, yes! The ethereal energies! We exchange glances and Kira's eyes widen. My heart thumps loudly in my chest. I think we finally stumbled upon a lead. You've heard of the ethereal energy, too? Of course. Only those who spend a lot of time at the shrine understand the inner workings. A young man like you must be very informed to have heard about it, too. I've only heard a little about it. What exactly is ethereal energy? Mrs. Tanaka scratches her head. Hmm. That's a very good question. It's just the magic of the shrine, I think. The magic of the shrine? That's right. The thing that grants wishes. Yeah, but what is that? The ethereal energies. Right, but how does that work? You know, I'm not too sure. I never asked about it. The excitement I felt a moment before quickly ebbs. How did you learn about ethereal energy? Oh, I overheard some people talking about it here at the shrine. Isn't that how you heard about it? Sort of. Mrs. Tanaka knows about as much as we do. I look over to Kira, who seems to mirror my thoughts. I guess this is a dead end, too. We may as well go back. I turn to Mrs. Tanaka. Well, thank you for all your help. Hmm? But I haven't done anything yet. Oh, wait here. She shuffles off. A moment later, she returns and firmly places an amulet in my hands. There you go. Now go make an offering, and you'll be blessed with a long and happy romance. We really aren't a couple. Hurry, hurry. 
the energy won't be here forever. I place the amulet back into her hands. I really can't accept this. Of course you can. She tries to give it back to me, but I refuse. No, really, we don't need this. Goodness, I forgot just how stubborn young men can be. But that's not always bad. It means they won't give up easily. Mrs. Tanaka winks knowingly at Kira again before slipping the amulet into her hands. Here you go. Make him listen to reason. Kira glances down at the amulet and shifts her gaze to me. If you insist. Mrs. Tanaka nods. No more dilly-dallying. Get to wishing. All right, we'll get going. Thank you again. You're welcome. Take care, you two. Alio Tin, L'Oreal Don Mali. Kira and I freeze. What did you call me? Whatever she said is definitely not Japanese. In fact, I don't think it's any recognizable language. What's that phrase you just said? Alio Tin, L'Oreal Don Mali. It's a phrase I learned here in the shrine. What does it mean? I think it's a parting. That's how I've heard it used. What language is that? Mrs. Tanaka hesitates. I'm not too sure, but I lived in Japan all my life and don't know much about other languages. I don't know it either. But I know something that will. I quickly pull out my phone. Hey, Google. Ding! What does Aliotin Lorientel Mali mean? Unrelated articles pull up on my phone. Let's try again. What language is Aliotin Lorientel Mali? More random articles pop up, none of which have to do with languages. I tape it out, type it out into Google Translate, but that doesn't even return a result. If Google doesn't know it, then it's probably not a language from here. If it's not a language from here, then maybe it's a language from another world. Mrs. Naka, I have a friend who may be interested in that phrase. Would it be okay if we came back to visit another day? Please do. An old woman like me doesn't get too many visitors. When would be a good day? I'll be back here on Thursday. Thank you, Mrs. Tanaka. We'll come visit then. Oh, that would make me so happy. Don't forget to bring your girlfriend, too. She's just a friend. Yes, your girlfriend. I don't think she'll listen if I try to clarify further. I'll be there. Kira must be thinking the same thing. After saying goodbye, Kira and I make our way out of the shrine. I feel lighter once we leave, filled with renewed hope. Kira catches up as we turn onto the road. I'm curious about what that phrase Mrs. Tanaka said means. I'm not sure, but I have a feeling Erlen might. You think it's a language she'd know? Yeah, none of us recognize it. Even Google didn't know it. Kira nods thoughtful. I wonder if Mrs. Tanaka learned the phrase from the ethereal energy woman you met that night. That's what I'm thinking. It's too much of a coincidence otherwise. You're right. We reach the intersection where our paths split. Thanks for coming with me again. I'm glad I did. Hopefully we'll learn more next Thursday. Kira nods. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah, see you. After a brief wave, we both head our separate directions. I pick up the pace and hurry home. My chest is nearly bursting with anticipation. I'm eager to tell Erlen we have a lead. I make it home breathless and aching. Immediately I go up the stairs, two at a time, then knock on Erlen's door. Come in. She's lounging in her bed, flipping through a book when I enter. Yes? Oh, she's just at the shrine looking for that old woman, I learned a very interesting phrase instead. Would you like to hear it? Is that what you interrupted me for? She turns back to her book. Your common phrases don't interest me. I shrug, feigning equal indifference. No? Well, alright then. Turning towards the door, I call out. Guess I'll just go to someone else and wish them Aliotin Lorian Dalmali instead. She responds automatically. Malinodorum Aliotin. Then her eyes widen as she realizes what she just said. She sits straight up on her bed. How do you know a high Amerian? Is that what you speak in Velden? No. It's an ancient language that's only used during formal services, which makes you knowing it even more unusual. Like I said, I went back to the shrine to see if I could find that old woman but ran into someone else. She taught me the phrase. Erlen jumps to her feet. 
Her expression is serious, but I can hear the hope in her voice. There's another Velden here? There must be, otherwise how did Mrs. Tanaka learn it? You must take me to them. Mrs. Tanaka said she'll be back to the shrine on Thursday. We can go find her after school and ask who she learned the phrase from. That's too far away. We'll go now. It's probably not a good idea to keep disturbing her at work. She already agreed to a Thursday visit. She'll be honored by a royal visit. Of course she'll make time. You're not royalty here, remember? She's about to retort, but sighs instead. <sighs> Fine. If that's when we have to visit, then so be it. The excitement over Erlen sinks back onto her bed. I'd like to be alone now, please. I have much to think about. I can imagine. The possibility of meeting one of her people here must be exciting and nerve-wracking. Sure. Returning to my room, I get a head start on my homework. When I'm tired of studying, I take a break by browsing memes on Reddit. There's some crazy stuff on the internet. Eventually, it's late and time for bed. After washing up, I happily slide into bed, feeling positive I drift into a gentle sleep. I wake up on time the next morning and quickly get ready for the day. Maybe if I'm fast enough, I can beat Mina to breakfast. After I get dressed and gather my things, I head downstairs. To my disappointment, both Mina and Erlen are already sitting at the table. Nice of you to join us. Erlen ignores me, happily chewing on a steamed bun. Looks like Aunt Emiko left us meat buns and sweet bean buns. I glance at her. Do you like it? She takes another bite and nods. They're delicious. I blink. That's the first time she's openly admitted to liking something. Mina claps her hands together in delight. I knew you'd like it. Yes, you were right all along. So, Mina, how much convincing did it take before she tried one? Mina stares blankly. Uh, one? What? Yeah, I just said they're good, and she tried one. And she was right. They are good. I narrow my eyes. So, if Mina says something's good, you'll trust her. But if I say something's good, you'll think it'd be bad. Indeed. She answered that a little too cheerfully, chewing another mouthful. Mina, wing woman me. Quick, Mina, tell her what a good guy I am. Mina looks at me and then sadly shakes her head. Sorry, but I cannot tell a lie. But I'm your cousin. I know. She sighs, Erlen grins smugly. This is why I trust Mina. Betrayed by my own flesh and blood. Mina turns back to Erlen. Do you really not have these back home? Erlen shakes her head, swallowing her bite. No, but rest assured that will change. Once I return, I'll instruct my chef to make them every morning. Mina's eyes widen. Chef? Wow, look at the time. We better get going before we're late. I don't want to go down this road. Better get Mina distracted so she'll stop asking questions. Luckily, Mina checks the time. Oh, you're right. Let's hurry. Grabbing an extra bun, I sling my bag over my shoulder and follow the girls out of the house. Mina and Erlen continue to chat, and I tag a little bit behind. They've really hit it off. I've noticed them spending more time together in the house, too. We soon reach the school gates. Together we enter and cross through the courtyard. Although we aren't late, we're kinda close. Most students are already in class. Hustling, we head down the hall into the classroom where we take our seats. Kosei greets us enthusiastically, full of energy, first thing in the morning. Hey, guys! Hey, man. I was worried you weren't going to make it on time today. Before any of us can reply, the instructor enters. We really did cut it close. Good morning, everyone. Please get settled. Class is starting. After taking the tents, Miss Sato clears her throat. <clears throat> As I'm sure you all know, the election for grade representative on the student council is this week. And I'm happy to share that we have two students in our class running this year. Because of this, I'm delaying the appointment of class representative until the end of the election. Whichever candidate is elected grade representative will also be our class representative. The room is soon abuzz with whispers and murmurs. Holding both titles would be an extra honor. A hand raises into the air. Miss Sato calls on the student. What if neither candidate is elected? Then the class representative will be chosen the traditional way, based on academic merit. The student seems satisfied with the answer. That makes sense to me, too. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started with our first candidate. Miss Sato glances down at her notes. Mr. Judo Osamu, whenever you're ready. 
Jiro immediately stands up in his seat, adjusting the thick glasses on his face. His uniform is starched and neatly pressed. He even has an extra pen and pocket square in his pocket. His expression is serious as he nods to the class. Thank you, everyone. I would take my responsibility as grade representative very seriously, and we use this opportunity to make school life better for everyone. I'll work to make sure we have the best materials we need for learning, such as new textbooks and chalk. But not just any chalk, the good kind that doesn't leave streaks when erased. He raises his fist in emphasis, but only gets a couple scattered claps in response. My eyes are drooping as he continues his speech. Even if I wanted to focus, his monotone voice makes it really hard. As I glance around the room, my classmates share my thoughts. Some have their heads in their hands as they lean on the desk. After what feels like an eternity, he sits back down. Miss Sato has a pained smile on her face. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Osamu, for that, um, informative speech. And our second candidate is Miss Erilyn Don. The class raises sleepy heads as Erilyn stands. She must have been serious about student council yesterday. Yes, that's right. I'm running for grade representative. I hope to have your support. Thank you. The class sits to attention at her short speech, looking hopeful again. Jiro scoffs. That's it? That's your opening remark? I said all that was necessary. You're not going to share what kind of platform you're running on? My platform? It's simple. My platform is that of the people, by the people, and for the people. The class erupts into whoops and cheers while Jiro sits dumbfounded. What? That's not how this works! That's not how any of this works! His protests are drowned out by the applause. Thank you, everyone! Thank you! Erilyn flashes the crowd a flirty wink before sitting back down. Then she glances at me. Not bad, right? I was born to be a leader. Short and sweet. It was short and to the point. I couldn't have asked for a better speech. I had a feeling that people would appreciate brevity. You were right. Miss Sato grins in amusement at the scene before her. Thank you very much, Miss Dawn. She claps politely before regaining control of the class. Thank you for everyone's enthusiasm today. I hope you will all give your support to your fellow classmates. We'll get to hear more from each of our candidates tomorrow morning during the candidate debate. Based on how today went, tomorrow's debate should be interesting. Erilyn and Jiro are two very different candidates, and I'm curious to meet the candidates running from the other homeroom classes. Now, let's begin today's lesson. I refocus my attention on Miss Sato as she starts the class. Class goes by quickly. Goes by quickly, especially when we're asleep. The bell announces the end of morning class and the beginning of lunch. Kosei walks over to Mina and me. Ready to go to lunch? Sure. You guys go ahead. I have to take care of something first. I'll meet you there. Okay. I, go I walk with Kosei to the cafeteria and get settled at one of the tables. As I unpack another delicious bento for my team Emiko, the savory smell makes my mouth water. I can't wait to dig in. Kosei unwraps an onigiri and takes a big bite. That was a crazy morning, right? Yeah, I think the election will be exciting this year. Me too. Erilyn's definitely going to win. Of course she is. Definitely, her speech was perfect. I know! Who knew you could say so little, but still mean so much? Exactly, I think she'll do well. Kosei nods. I hear a thud behind me. We both look over to the source of the noise. Three older students gather around a table, looming over an uncomfortable-looking guy. He's skinny and small, and his books are scattered on the floor. One guy, who I assume is leader of the bullies, sits in the chair beside the scrawnier boy. Rio, what's going on? I only got a 90 on that homework you did for me. It was supposed to be perfect. I... I had to make some mistakes. If it was a perfect score, the teachers would get suspicious. Are you saying I'm stupid? Rio shrinks back as the older boy leans forward. No, it's just a precaution. The bully sits back up again, and Ryo lets out a shaky breath. Well, that's not what you promised me. You promised me a perfect score. We had a deal and you broke it, which means you still owe me. I'm sorry. I'll redo it. The bully laughs, which prompts his friends to laugh, too. Oh, it's too late for that. I'll have to take your lunch as compensation. No! Let's see what's on the menu for today. Ryo reaches for his food, but the bully swipes it first. All Ryo brought was a plain rice ball. It's even smaller than Kosei's. 
He eats the food in one gulp, then frowns. It's it. That's all I have. Well, you better come up with something fast because I'm still hungry. Yeah, you messed up and you need to fix it. He's been very fair so far. Rio gulps. I, I don't have any money. That's what everyone says until they suddenly have it. I really don't have any. I take another look at Rio. His uniform has been worn and washed so often that the colors have faded. It hangs loosely off his skinny frame. My guess is that it's second hand. I can see the patches where holes have been hastily sewn up. It doesn't seem like Ryu is hiding any money. The bullies circle in on the boy. We have to do something! I look back to see Kosei clenching his fist, his teeth gritted in anger. Let's get him. You're right, that kid is about to get himself beat up. I get to my feet ready to act, but Kosei is already one step ahead of me. Before the bullies can do further damage, Kosei storms over to them. I follow a few steps behind. Hey! Leave him alone. The bullies are shocked for a moment, but their surprise quickly turns to amusement. Aw, oh, is this one of your little friends, Rio? Rio shakes his head, too stunned to speak. You already got what you wanted from him, so just leave him alone. He still owes me. He doesn't owe you anything. The bully laughs. Why do you care? Unless you want to pay on his behalf. The bullies smile in a predatory way. They now surround Kosei like sharks. Kosei grins dangerously. The atmosphere is tense. The cafeteria has grown quiet. You sure you want to start something with us first year? There's three of us and only one of you. You mean two of us? I step up beside Kosei. He looks over to me, a strong determination in his eyes and a half smile on his face. He nods and I nod back. Three of us. We all whirl around at Mina's voice. She marches up the bullies, getting right in their faces. Back off! The bullies pause, frowning. Now you have little girls doing your fighting for you? What, does that scare you? Are you afraid you'll get beat up by a girl? She smiles threateningly. I can almost see the fire ridding off her as her eyes blaze in the bullies. They stare Mina down for a moment, then back off. Whatever. This wouldn't be a fair fight anyway. Yeah, it's not worth it. Slowly they step away, kicking Ryo's chair one last time. I hear them grumbling about not fighting a girl as they pass. I let out the breath that I had been holding. We were lucky we didn't end up exchanging blows. Mina turns on us. Oh my gosh, you could have gotten into deep trouble. Somebody needed to stand up to them. They can't get away with bullying people. What if you'd actually gotten into a fight, though? You could have been suspended. But we didn't fight. Yeah, only because I got here in time to stop it. The two of them pause as Ryo approaches us. Thank you guys for your help. No problem. Are you okay? He nods. Yeah. Then he hesitates. I don't know how I can repay you guys. There's no need. Yeah, as long as you're okay. Ryo nods again. I'm Ryo. Kosei. I'm Hiro and this is Mina. If you guys ever need homework help or something, let me know. I'm pretty good at tutoring. He offers a wry smile. Kosei grins. Thanks, man. We'll keep that in mind. I'll see you around. Thanks again. Ryo clucks his bag and exits the cafeteria. Come on. Let's get back to lunch. I pull Kosei aside as we head back to our table. Hey, that was a really good thing you did. Kosei shrugs. It was the right thing to do. I mean, what if it had been me? I'd hope that someone would stand up for me too. It won't be you because you're your own MC. You don't have to worry about that, it'll never be you. How do you know? Because you, Kosei Nakahara, are the MC of your own story. And MCs don't get bullied. He laughs. That's right! Good thing I have my best friend to remind me of the important things. We settle down at the table and return to our lunches. All's well that ends well. Mina snorts. Would you be saying that if I hadn't arrived when I did? Uh, yeah. Please! They only backed down because they were intimidated by me. I mean, that could be it. But it's more likely that they didn't want to find a girl. Mina's a girl? Could have fooled me! Mina punches Kosei's arm. Ow! He rubs at his fresh wound, wincing. No wonder those guys ran away. You hit like a truck! Mina scoffs. I barely even touched you! Maybe you should hit the gym. I do! Besides, if you work out so much, you'll look even more manly. She pulls back her arm to hit him again, but Kosei dodges it out of the way. I kid, I kid. 
Mina isn't convinced. She leaps out of her chair and lunges at Kosei, who scrambles away just in time. She chases after him, and the two vanish from sight. Uh, guys? What about your food? I sigh. So much for eating lunch together. The bell rings a little while later, and I head back to class. For the rest of the day, I take notes and do my best to pay attention. I'm still thankful when the dismissal bell rings. I have some free time after school today. As I pack up my things, I wonder if anyone wants to hang out. Hmm. So, if anything that I learned from Ace Academy, these two bottom options are going to be the worthless ones. You will probably need to see all the events for the whichever girl you're after, so stick with either Erlen or Kira, and whichever one you decide to spend time with, do not spend time with the other one unless that one is not available. I catch up to Erlen after class so we can walk home together. Ready to go? Of course. We walk in silence as we exit the school. Erlen is becoming more familiar with the route home and walks alongside me. When we return, I'd like to request a withdrawal from the treasury in the house. What? The place where you store your money. You mean a wallet. We aren't a bank. Normal people don't have treasuries. She shrugs. That sounds much more dangerous, but all right. I'd like to request a withdrawal from your wallet. I narrow my eyes. Why? Erlen sighs as if the answer should be obvious. Because I need money. Yeah? Why do you need money? To buy things, of course. She looks exasperated. I bite back my rising frustration. Obviously, but what do you want to buy? Oh, just a little token of appreciation so I can say thank you for hosting me. I catch myself smiling. That's very considerate of Erlen. Sometimes she can be hard to please, but it's nice to know that my help is appreciated. That's very kind of you, Erlen, but you don't have to. I wouldn't feel right otherwise. I know you're trying to be polite, but I don't need a gift. She blinks. That's fortunate, because it's not for you. Oh. I can't keep the disappointment out of my voice. Then, who is it for? Your aunt and uncle. Ah, that does make sense. I think they'd appreciate that. I hope so. What do you want to buy them? Flowers. She beams brightly, confident in her choice. That was quick. She must have been thinking about this for a while. That's a good idea. I lead the way to the flower shop, and Erlen follows a step behind. The air is warm and mild, making it a pleasant walk. A lot of people linger outside, enjoying the nice weather before the cold sets in. After a while, I see the green awning of the shop. Pots of bright flowers are neatly arranged by the window. Their petals are open wide, proudly displaying a rainbow of color. A small bell dings as we enter, alerting the clerk of our presence. Welcome. Have a look around. I'll be with you in a moment. Thanks. Erlen already inspects the flowers. She kneels down to get a closer look, touching the petals. After making a circle in the store, she nods, calling over the clerk. Yes, let's grab some of these sweet pea blossoms and bell flowers. She points at the different plants while the clerk scrambles to collect them. Hmm, add the hydrangeas. The clerk reaches for the flowers. Actually, no. Leave out the hydrangeas. Let's add camellias instead. This continues for a bit. Sometimes Erlen seems certain about her choice, but a moment later we'll reconsider. I wait patiently for her to make her selection, but this is taking a lot longer than I thought. How hard can it be to pick out flowers? It'd go a lot faster if she didn't keep changing her mind. With a sigh, I check the time on my phone. Erlen pauses and I look up. Oh, are you done? She shifts her gaze my way. Not yet. I look over to the clerk who holds a bundle of flowers in her arms. Are you sure? Yes. Now don't rush me. Perfection demands care. They're just flowers. It doesn't seem like it's that hard of a choice. Erlen crosses her arms. Then perhaps you'd like to help. Are you being serious right now? Yes. If you know so much, then by all means, go ahead and choose some. Okay. If I had to make a bouquet, what would I do? <laughs> well, I do this myself. I can leave it up to the experts. I turn to the clerk. I'd like to send a bouquet that says thank you for your hospitalities. What flowers would you recommend? Erlen's face turns red. That's cheating! What? Why? It's not a gesture from your heart if someone else makes the bouquet for you. 
then how am I supposed to choose? She flashes me a smug smile. It's not so easy now, is it? You're going out of your way to make it hard. Flowers are beautiful, but they also have their own meanings. So when I choose each individual blossom, I'm sharing a message from my heart. A gift should be something personal, and that's exactly why you can't have someone else do it for you. I hadn't realized she was choosing for flowers based on symbolism. How do you even know all this? A princess must be knowledgeable in a variety of subjects. Now hush, I need to concentrate. I quiet down and watch Erlen select a few more flowers and green filler plants. After she's done, we bring everything to the counter and check out. I'm putting my change back into my wallet while Erlen turns around and walks out of the store. Finding back another side, I snatch the flowers and follow her out. Hey, you almost forgot these. She smiles broadly. No, I didn't. And she sets off in the direction towards home. Pushing back the jolt of irritation, I follow her. Erlen's mood seems to be lifted, and there's a small spring in her step. She must be excited about this bouquet. We reach the house, and she gets to work. As a bystander, it looks like she's inserting the blossoms at random, but the concentration on her face is otherwise. Hmm. What if you stuck a rose over here? I point between the big camellia blossom and the droopier bellflower. Erlen shakes her head. It would make the flowers look too cramped. She tucks the rose in to show me. See? The way the camellia covers half of the rose makes the whole arrangement feel too busy. She adds a wispy sprig of green instead, making the piece feel airy and light. In spite of myself, I'm impressed. Flower arranging was never something I thought about, but the level of design and inter intricacy is immense. Finally, she takes a step back and admires her handiwork. Another Dawn masterpiece! It really is. I can see the different textures that each flower and green leaf brings. Some blossoms are larger, some are smaller, and although every bit of the vase is full, the bouquet doesn't feel overwhelming. That actually looks really nice. Of course it does. I'll admit that I'm impressed. She raises a brow. You doubted my abilities? I didn't expect this hobby. No, but it's a pretty unusual skill to have, so to find someone good at it is rare. Erlen grins. Either way, I wouldn't have been able to assemble such a pretty bouquet. Indeed. You don't have to agree so readily. She merely smiles. We hear the soft click of the front door opening. Erlen fluffs up the blossoms one last time as Aunt Emiko enters the kitchen. Hello, hello! I just popped over for a minute because I forgot my... She gasps when she sees the flowers. Oh, what a gorgeous bouquet! Erlen beams with pride. Please accept this as a thank you for your kindness and generosity. You and your husband have been very kind to me, and I won't forget your hospitality. Aw, oh, sweetie! This is so thoughtful of you! And you don't have to be so polite. It has been a delight having you stay with us. A light pink dusts Erlen's cheek. I've had a wonderful stay with you, too. Which is why I hope you like the flowers. Aunt Emiko pulls Erlen into a hug. I love it! Thank you so much! Erlen stiffens, clearly unused to the gesture, but slowly she relaxes and hugs her back. After a moment, they pull away and Aunt Emiko takes another look at the bouquet. They're very beautiful, and would be such a lovely addition to our home. Why don't we display it on the table in the hall? Erlen nods, still smiling as she follows Aunt Emiko. I hear them talk more about the flowers. Erlen shares the type of plants as well as their meanings. I briefly consider joining them, but I don't want to intrude. The two of them haven't really had a chance to bond yet. Once their conversation is over, I hear the door open again as Aunt Emiko returns at the bakery. I join Erlen in the hall. And that went well. She nods. The bouquet turned out amazing. Yeah, they're missing the out part. Have you made them often? Actually, yes. Flower arranging is an important part of a princess's upbringing, and I've always found it to be one of my more interesting lessons. How come? Because it's deceptively difficult. In theory, it seems like an easy practice. You just put flowers in a vase. Even a simpleton could do that. She glances at me for emphasis. Hey! But to turn it into an art form, you have to take into account so many different elements. Textures, colors, shapes, negative space, location of the bouquet, and so on. It's like solving a puzzle. When she describes it like that, it does sound like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. The flowers are all of the scattered puzzle pieces that have to be mixed and matched to complete the image. She flips her hair. Of course. 
It helps that I've always been good at it. In fact, most of the arrangements displayed in the palace are an Erlen original. Oh really? In that case... Where's mine? I should receive one too. She blinks. You? Yeah, I'm also a host. Where's my gift? Erlen slides into a haughty grin. Your gift is the pleasure of my company. <laughs> so tempting. It is pleasant indeed. I smile, although I know she's joking. This time with her... This time with her has actually been fun. I can live with that. As you should. A moment later, she giggles. <laughs> did you truly think I wouldn't have prepared a gift for you, too? Does that mean you did? With a sly smile, she disappears back into the kitchen. When she returns, she holds me a bright yellow flower. It has broad petals with a long cup-like center. This is a jonquil. I chose it especially for you. Wow, really? I didn't notice her pick this out at the shop. I'm touched by the gesture. Thank you. What does it mean? She shrugs. You can figure it out. It's not my fault you don't know the language of flowers. Erlen flows into a fluid stretch. Thank you for your assistance today. Now, after all of that work, I need to rest. No problem. I'm already pulling up Google on my phone and don't notice her exit. Quickly, I do a search for the meaning of a jonquil, or whatever that thing is. The result comes up with return of affection. What does that mean? Is she returning my affection? What counts as affection? Maybe helping her pay for the flowers, or helping her navigate this new world? Or is she expecting me to return her affection? I freeze, my eyes growing wide. Does Erlen like me? But she hasn't done anything affectionate toward me. Wait, is this referring to romantic affection or platonic? I do a bit more digging, but end up with conflicting information. Apparently, it could relate to either. A groan of frustration escapes my lips. I look back up from my phone. Erlen is long gone, and it would be awkward directly asking her. I somehow get the feeling she left this ambiguous on purpose. I'll look more into it later. For now, I better put the flower in some water. After finding a small vase, I set the flower on the windowsill in my room. The sun catches on the buttery petals, and the more I look at it, the calmer I feel. A soft smile grows on my lips. It's definitely a thoughtful gift. I return to the kitchen to clean up, but pause instead. Not only have the broken stems and leaves been collected into a pile, the extra flowers are bundled into a mini bouquet. Did Erlen do this? Never seen her clean up after herself before. I wonder if this is also a part of my gift. Is this a form of her affection? Shaking my head, I clear off the discarded plans and put the bouquet in a vase. I decide to leave it in the center of the table for all to view. Afterwards, I head up to my room. The rest of the evening goes by quickly. After working on some homework, I play games until late in the night. Once I realize the time, I get ready for bed, and then I settle in and go to sleep.